LPB has won a lot of awards for content like Precipice and Ritual, but one of the most prestigious is of course the Emmy, which you won for the series, The Green Book. Yes, so back in 2022, me and my co-producer, Emma Reed, put together a series called Safe Haven, Louisiana's Green Book, where we went to 10 locations listed in the book. So we interviewed people who remembered businesses, taverns, bars, places that aren't even in business anymore. And, you know, that was one of my favorite things that I've done here. I am the most proud of this series because in addition to, you know, winning the Emmy, I got to learn so much about Louisiana's history, and I don't think people realize the impact that Louisiana has had in the civil rights movement over the years. In this series, I got to learn all of that, and I also got to preserve it for viewers to look at for years to come. I love that. Really, just these are stories that would be lost to history if it were not for your work. And also, Emma Reed, uh, your co-producer, so we'll give a shout out to her as well. Yes, she did a lot of work and a lot of research, so I, this Emmy would not have been possible without her either. So I, I like to always highlight all the work that she's done. And the next episode was actually something that she had found, and um, it was about a house in Opelousas, and it operated as kind of an Airbnb, but you know, during the 60s and during the civil rights era. So um, this is one of my favorites, is the very first episode that we ever did, and I cannot wait for you guys to watch this one again. It's hard to believe if I were to travel just 70 years ago, this little guide could potentially save my life. I'm Kara St. Cyr, and this is Safe Haven, Louisiana's Green Book. 1939 was the second year that the Green Book was published. For a small rural town, Opelousas had a surprisingly vibrant African-American commercial district. They called it The Hill. For some reason, the businesses in The Hill never made it into the Green Book, with one exception, tourist homes. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, love? <laughs> My name is Kara. Kara, I'm Wilbur, Jerome. Sub Jerome remembers one of these homes very well. They had big bands came through this town. Yeah, Duke Ellington, Carl Basin, Eric James, Sam Cook, B.B. King. And all these named people came to this club here in Opelousas. The club Sub is referring to is Bradford's White Eagle, a famous venue on the Chitlin circuit, which was for black musicians. And back in those days, they didn't have any hotels or motels for blacks. So they had to go and live in different people's houses. You know? And my grandmother took a bunch of them in. You see that house on the corner right here, the left, right here? Yeah, I can see it. That's the big house right there. Sub's grandmother, Beulah Jerome, ran a tourist home, and they called it the big house. Because it was the big house. And there were people there all the time, 24-7. You had teachers lived there, students, construction workers. You would never go in that house if there wasn't anything cooked on their stove. This is the big house on the corner of South Lombard Street. We're meeting Sub's cousin, Donald Jerome. He grew up in the brick house right behind it. Hey, how you doing? My name is Kara. <laughs> I work here. Luckily, the current tenant, Mrs. Betty, welcomed us inside. Oh, well, everything is the same outside. But the inside was renovated. They had six rooms, bedrooms. Six bedroom, living room and a kitchen and one bathroom. All these people that would use one bathroom. And right here in this room here, she had a piano in there. They were doing, old man Doom used to play the piano over there. Yeah, they were, they were dancing here. Yeah. So they would come here while your grandmother was here? Yeah, she was, she, she was rent rooms out. Even if she didn't know them, she would Yeah, hey, well, back in them I days, people were not like that's you, about now, you know. Green Book, well, blacks couldn't stay in the hotel. They didn't have any. Oh, you know, wow. yeah. The mean time you had nowhere to go, you slept in your car. There just wasn't no place for them. She used to come to these houses, that all they could come to these houses, you know, and rent a room. Surprisingly, this safe haven wasn't even in an all black neighborhood. But all, all this across the street was white. White people. Okay. And over here was white people. Okay. Yeah. And across the, across the street was white people too. So we were, like I told them earlier, I, I live in a neighborhood, we were the only black family in the block. Really? Yes, ma'am. Wow. I told her I was 10 years old before I knew I was black. Opelousas had one of the only all black high schools in the area, which drew teachers from all over the state. People would bring the 
The kids here are some, some of them come in wagons. The Jerome House remained in the Green Book for 27 years until its last publication in 1966. You know, when I moved here, they say a lot of teachers live here, but I really didn't know the history, the real history about it. And I'm, now I'm getting this opportunity to, even, to witness it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Today, most people don't even know this neighborhood was called The Hill. Almost all of the Black-owned businesses here closed after integration, and things seemed to fall apart. I'm beginning to learn this story is not uncommon. 